Hey everybody, Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com coming at you again with another Lightroom tutorial. It is installment number two of From Raw to Glorious JPEG. Uh, back in August, I started this. I said I was going to try to make a couple of these videos a month, and here we sit at probably about around the middle of November when this video comes out, and I've done one of them. So we're going to try to kind of get this thing back on track. Um, I've mentioned in my live Instagram show, which by the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, at Tutvid. You should definitely be following me over there. I do a live Instagram show just about every day, Monday through Saturday, uh, at different times throughout the day. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, I mentioned over there and I've had some people ask as well, hey, where's from Raw to Glorious JPEG? To which I answer, oh shoot, that's a good point. But here we are with installment number two. We're going to cover a bunch of cool stuff in Adobe Lightroom. And without further ado, oh, with further ado, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss any Photoshop, photography, or Lightroom related videos in the future. Let's jump over to Lightroom right now and check this thing out. All right, so here we are. We got a wedding photo. Uh, this was such a fun wedding to shoot, such a cool venue, uh, just beautiful architecture all around. Uh, what I'm going to do before I do anything, and normally I do cropping at the end, but I kind of want uh, to crop this to a box. So I'm going to grab the crop tool. I'm going to click aspect or right next to aspect and choose one to one and I'm going to drag this maybe something kind of like that I really like to use my navigator up here to get a good overall view of how the image is going to look I just feel like it gives it ni a nice even amount of space on three sides of the bride and groom here with this particular crop I kind of like it I'm going to hit the enter key to commit myself to that crop like I said normally I crop at the end of the whole editing process but I just want to kind of get it out of the way uh, up front here so first things first before beginning and messing around with the basic tab I want to jump right down to camera calibration and I'm going to change my profile from Adobe standard to camera neutral camera neutral tends to give you like a little bit more dynamic range it just it, it gives the uh, the the feeling that you're de or not desaturating but decontrasting the image a little bit but it really seems to open up the shadows just a tiny bit and just dumb down and and cool off the highlights just a touch I'm also going to infuse my shadows here with Eh, right around plus 35, heading toward the magenta. Um, I'll probably desaturate reds about negative negative 20-ish, just to you know, make sure my skin tones are not looking too red. I like that. Uh, in terms of the green, let's maybe shift the hue of the green. Negative, yeah, I'm, I'm at negative 26. I think that looks good for this particular image. For your image, maybe it'll be a little different. But I am going to boost the saturation of the greens just a little bit. I really want to try to bring out some of the color here in this little sort of mink stole or fur jacket, whatever that is that she's wearing. I kind of dig it. Uh, I'm going to shift the blue hue a little bit as well. I'll go like negative 10, negative, well, I'm at negative 13. Uh, and then I definitely want to desaturate this a little bit. So if I desaturate it too much, you can see it gives me kind of this like super dark moody look, which I don't hate, but it's not really quite what we're going for here. I think I'll go like negative negative 40, negative, I'm at negative 38 if you're following my numbers exactly. I kind of like it. We can use our little toggle switch here so we can see there's before, there's after. You can see we're just toning the image down a little bit uh, before we go in and really start attacking contrast and color and things like that. I'm going to come in to do effects and I'm going to boost dehaze here. Just infuse some a, a good amount of this kind of contrasty punch that dehaze has to offer. You can see again before, after. It just gives us that nice punch that I, that I really kind of like. And then also to get it out of the way so we don't forget in the details tab here. I'm going to select the loop here and I'm going to either I'll put it on her face or his face, maybe his face so we can actually see it. Uh, and then we're going to begin the sharpening process. Now I'm going to come over here to navigator. I'm going to choose to view the image at a one to one, which means it's going to zoom the image to 100%. And when you're sharpening your images, you should be viewing them at 100%. Now a little trick, hold down your alter option key while you're dragging any of the sliders here in the sharpening tab. And you can see here for like sharpening, it's going to give me this monochromatic version of my image. So I can really just focus on the sharpening and how it's affecting the edges and not necessarily color and tone. Cool. Uh, I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to drag the radius. Eh, radius doesn't need to be a, a change that much. Right around 1 will probably be fine. And then detail. You can also see with not very much detail or you can get a lot of detail. If you crank detail up too much, I notice it gives like this crunchy, noisy, grainy uh, texture to your image, which is not not so cool. And then we'll come over here to masking and, and all, holding an alter option is most important here for masking uh, because we want to really just focus on targeting the detail details on them. So just the white areas that you see, the white areas are what the sharpening is going to attack. So these big areas of just like dark navy blue or black, whatever color his tuxedo is here, uh, like sharpening that, really all it's going to do is bring out grain and noise. We really want to focus our sharpening here around his face. Now we've masked a little bit too much because you can see how we got like this softness in his skin. So that's too much. I'm going to hold down alter option. I'm going to back the masking up and I'm going to really affect much more of the image. That looks a lot better, but I think I need to reduce the detail a little bit. 
and you can just keep going over it and make sure that you, you get the sharpening where you want it to be. That, that's good enough for now. I'm going to come back up here to Navigator, choose to fit the image, and we're on to the next step. So let's come up here to Basic, and I'm going to change the temperature. I want to boost it. I want to make it a little warmer. We'll push it up around 6,500. I kind of dig that. If you're picky with your numbers, you could just round it off at 6,500 exactly. I think I want to infuse a little green into this. So I'm going to slide tint backward, maybe about negative 10, negative 11, something like that. It looks cool. It still needs a little more contrast. So I'm going to use my up arrow keys. I just select you know, the contrast uh, input slider. I'll go like plus 15. I think that's cool. Uh, highlights are good from where I sit. I'm going to come down here to shadows. I'm going to boost the shadows. So this is actually making the shadows brighter. I'm going to go to plus 50 with those. And then the actual blacks, I'm going to make them darker. So I'm going to knock them down one, two, ooh, three. I'll probably go three. I know it looks like we're doing a lot of damage, but you'll see. We're going to bring it back here in a moment, uh, and you'll see how exactly we do that. Then I'm going to boost my clarity. I'll go like, I usually don't go much more than 20 or 30. In this case, eh, 25, 30, that looks pretty good. And just to tone down some of the color a little bit, I'm going to uh, knock my vibrance down negative 10. Now, it looks like we've done a lot of damage to this image. Hang with me. We're going to be playing with tone curves, and that's going to be changing things a lot here in just a second. So here in tone curve, by the way, I'm using uh, I'm using the point curve, not the parametric curve. This, I believe, is called the parametric curve. I, I prefer to use the point curve. You have a lot more control. It's a little more maybe advanced, if you will, but eh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of uh, how to work with that right here, right now. I'm going to select this bottom point. This is the black point in the image, and I'm going to drag it straight upward. You're going to see that's immediately going to lift all those dark shadows we created and give us this like faded, almost like milky look in our shadows. That's cool. Then I'm going to click another point and drag it back and pull my line back to kind of where it was. That's going to now give us this faded contrast look. But I'm also going to pull up over here. I'm going to maybe add another line here or another, another point, I'm sorry, another point there. I'm just looking to boost the brightness in the brighter parts of the image. Over here, this is the darker area of the image. This is kind of like somewhat dark. This is somewhat bright, and this is the absolute brightest parts of the image. And up here, if you pull up, you make it brighter. If you pull down, you make it darker. So you can see we're already getting this like really interesting toning effect here on our image, borderline, like dare I say, uh, faded film type effect. Hey, if you really enjoy this tutorial and you're liking what you're seeing, consider supporting the channel by picking up a copy of my Photoshop course. The link will appear up there, up there in the corner of the video. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. If you're a photographer, if you use Photoshop for retouching, I really think you'll like it and you'll help support the channel. And for that, Ooh, thank you so much. Let's get back to this tutorial. But we also want to play around with the individual color channels. So right now we're just in the composite RGB channel. Let's go to the red channel. Uh, and what we'll do here is we will add a second point here and boost the reds in the shadows. But it's really giving us this red wash over entire our, our our entire image, excuse me, I'm stumbling over my words here. So I wanna add a second point here and just pull everything back into line, kind of like that. It's gonna cool off some of that redness in the highlights, right, and it, and it almost infuses some cyan as well. So you can just play around with that. Maybe I have a little bit too much red going on in there. I'll just tone it down a very little bit, just something like that, that's cool. Let's go over to the green channel. And here on the green channel, I'm just going to add a point here, and I'm going to nudge it downward a tiny, tiny bit. Just going to give us a little, little tiny bit of, of magenta, and I think that's actually too much. And this has to be super, super duper subtle. I'll go something. I'll go something like that. I'm just playing with it until it looks about right. If it looks like there's too much red or magenta, uh, that's where we, we adjust that here in the greens. Let's run down to the blue channel here. And here in the blue channel, yellow is the opposite of blue. I'm going to add a point somewhere up here in the, the moderate brights of the image and just pull down on it just a very little bit. Just add a little bit of yellow or yellowish color to the highlights. So once again, if we shut off tone curves, we turn on tone curves, we're getting this kind of color grade effect that we've created. Now next up, we're going to come to the HSL section and we got our hue, saturation, and luminance. I think I want to begin with hue and I'm just looking here at his skin tone. It, it looks a little bit too red and, and I, I don't know, not quite right. I'm going to use a little scrubby slider tool here and I can be dragging up or down on that. You can see if I drag down, it makes it more pink than it was. That's not right. So I want to drag this upward a little bit. Uh, just, man, we'll go up a little bit. I think I'm going to change some of the reds to make them a little bit more orange as well. So I'm just going to manually drag the red slider for that. Uh, and I think I'm, I'll, I'll shift some of these aquas over a little bit more toward green and be green a little bit toward aqua. Just what you can see the the green slider it's affecting a little bit down here in these kind of shadowy areas and then yellow you can see if we play with yellow if we make yellow too green the pillars behind them almost look green so i would almost rather just tip that back toward orange just a little bit 
I'll come over here to saturation because right now there's way too much saturation in our greens and yellows. So we'll grab the yellow slider. We'll just slide that back. We'll grab the green slider as well. We'll slide that back. You can see how that's kind of helped neutralizing some of the craziness in her jacket, right? We still got a little ways to go. Let's try desaturating orange a little bit. You can see that takes everything way down. If we saturate orange, that does a lot of damage. So let's just bring it back like... And yeah, something like negative nine doesn't look too bad. Let's see what the reds do. We probably should pull the reds back a little bit as well. I think something like that is kind of cool. And in terms of aqua blue, purple, magenta, we don't need to mess with that. And then here in luminance, uh, let's boost the reds a little bit, make them a little bit brighter, and also boost the oranges. So you can see this is almost going to create this contrasty effect. But we want to be careful because if you go too far, it just, you can see, it gives us this really unnatural looking light on the background, as well as the highlights on both of their skin. Uh, it, I don't know, it just, it makes it look like a cheap, uh, like high pass, contrasty type effect. We really want to be careful with that. So I'm going to keep that kind of subtle. Let's boost yellow and see what that does. I actually kind of like that. It's helping neutralize more of the color here in her fur jacket. That's kind of cool. So we'll crank yellow up a bit until it looks about uh, just, you know, kind of whatever looks good. We can mess around a little bit with green. I don't think there's enough green in there to do much with. I'm going to come back to red here. Let's boost the red a little bit. You see how that's just really filling out his face and in fact her face as well. If I push that up, you know, close to 90, maybe even close to 100, I'll, I'll leave it at 90. But I really kind of like the way that looks. So we can shut off hue saturation, turn it back on. You can see just how much that that in and of itself changes the complexion of the image. And at this point, I can go back to basic and I can say, you know what, let's just uh, bump up the overall exposure of the whole image just a little bit, you know, plus 0 0.3 looks good. And here I could play with the highlights. I could either pull them up or even I could pull them down and I could further push my shadows up. If something like that, I think would look good. I can try pushing the whites up, but you can see, look, just look at what that does. That does a crazy amount to the image. If anything, we might want to pull the whites down a little bit and maybe just push some of our blacks back up. But be very careful because as we push those up, remember our curves are pumping a ton of light into the shadow. So we'll just fine tune that a little bit. I kind of I kind of dig it. Next up, I'm going to grab the radial filter. So that's this little tool here. So we can click that. And I'll come up here uh, out here to the middle of the document. And I'll just click and drag. And you can see it looks like we're doing a lot of damage. Don't worry about that. Uh, I'm just going to drag this circle kind of like this over my image. You know, sort of looping around them. The first thing I want to do is make sure I tick on invert. Because I want, uh, I want this effect to be uh, hitting them, not the stuff around them. And you can see part of what's blowing them out is the fact that the exposure is way up. So I can just double click the exposure slider. It resets it. Everything looks uh, back to normal. What we can do here is maybe we'll boost the exposure just, I mean, just a little bit. Uh, we'll lift the shadows just a little bit. We'll maybe boost the highlights just a tiny little bit. Let me go back to shadows here. I'm going to use my arrow keys to get a little bit more of a fine tune. Maybe I'll add a couple more ticks of clarity. Come down here to sharpness, add a couple more ticks of sharpness. That looks pretty good. And I might even try messing with the white balance a little bit. If I make the center a little warmer, no, I definitely don't like that. If I cool down the center just a little bit, yeah, I kind of dig the way that looks. Kind of, ch It changes their skin tone a little bit in, I think, a good way. If I put more green in there, put more, yeah, put, put a little bit more magenta in there. That looks pretty cool. So I think I'll sit with that. We're going to add another radial mask here by selecting radial mask and just making sure we have new selected and then I can click and drag anywhere. I'm going to click and drag kind of a similar area and drag out a selection, right? Kind of something sort of like that. Maybe I'll move it downward a little bit. Something like that. Uh, in this case, we do want to affect the outside, so all the areas around our mask. And all I'm going to do here is adjust my exposure. I'm just going to darken it. We're going to create a little bit of like a subtle vignette. You do not want this to be super duper strong. This you want more than anything to just be to, to be kind of like a subliminal. Your eyes are being drawn to the center of the image, and you're not quite sure why. We do not want to go for that old like 1990s, early 2000s style harsh vignette around the edges. Just something nice and simple like that and then I'll come over here and I'll choose the graduated neutral density filter and I'm going to drag up from the bottom and we're going to apply a little darkness down here at the bottom if you hold down shift it'll drag straight up for you and I'm just going to darken up the bottom here so this is going to add a little bit of like shape to the image that's pretty cool maybe I can darken up the shadows a little bit darken up the blacks a little bit down there oop not too much you got to be really Really sensitive there with the black slider. That's gonna that's gonna get messy if you don't. And then I think we'll we'll pull a little bit of light down from the top. And I know this might seem counterintuitive because we just applied that vignette, but it all just kind of works together. So let's pull this down from the top. I'll even do it on a little bit of an angle. And this I want to be super subtle. If I hold down my Alter Option key, you can see here that the Effect button changes to Reset. We can click that. It's just gonna reset all of our handles here. And I'm going to just boost exposure a little bit. So I'm just gonna tap up with my arrow key once twice. That's pretty cool. And then then I'll tap up 
here with highlights, just boosting them, you know, I don't know, to about 15, that's probably good. And we can come down here and we can use our little switcherooski here to shut our graduated filters off. You can see how we're just kind of flipping the overall light in the image, darkening up the foreground and adding light as if light is coming down from the sky to light them up. All right, I'm going to click on the graduated filter icon to close that up. And let's come down here. Whoop, I don't, I don't need to see the timeline. Let's hit the little before after so we can see there's the image we began with and this is the image we have now. So, you know, yeah, it took a couple minutes to go in there and do it, but we used all kinds of different techniques here in Lightroom to attack the shadows and influence the color and this and that and the other thing and the overall environmental lightness or the way the light was falling in the image to really change the way this image looks and take it from what was a pretty cool shot out of camera to a very cool presentable kind of finished shot. The one thing I might want to go in and do is use the adjustment brush and just clean up right here, like especially on her chest, uh, looks like there's a little bit too much green, you know what I mean? The skin tone doesn't quite look right. In fact, let's let's attack that real quick. Let's use our adjustment brush. You can grab your, if you have a Wacom tablet, grab that. Uh, once more, we can hold down Alter Option and just select the little reset button. The word effect will change to reset. Voila. And uh, we've got green and a little bit too much orange in there. So we'll use our temperature and tint slide. Uh, Temperature, temperature and tint sliders. That's the word I'm searching for. And I'll nudge uh, temperature down about five and I'll nudge tint up about five. And uh, we could use auto mask, but I think we'll be good here just painting by hand. And I'll just paint over this area. It doesn't look like we're doing much, so maybe I'll, I'll change temperature a little bit more. I'll move it down to like negative 15, maybe down to negative 20, something like that. And I'll push tint up to about 10. All right, so just hang with me here. I know it probably looks like I'm doing all kinds of damage. Then I'll just hold down my Alter Option key, and I will make sure I just touch up the mask a little bit. Again, the more time you spend on it, the better, obviously, it's going to look. So make sure you, especially if you're doing it for a client, make sure you do a, a nice job for them. All right, now that's obviously a little bit too much. So we'll come back here to temperature, and we'll push this back to, like, negative 10. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, and then we'll push tint down to maybe, like, 7 six, five. Yeah, I'll push that down to five. And we can just look at a quick before after. So there's before and there's after. Super subtle, but absolutely, absolutely makes a difference. Just help neutralize uh, her skin tone and keep it from looking too kind of like radioactive because I don't think the client would appreciate that all that much. But there's the before, there's the after image. That's how we take a, just a straight out of camera raw shot. We apply this kind of rich faded film effect to it. You could throw some grain on top if grain is your thing as well. Uh, it's actually, it's usually a good idea to throw a little bit of grain just as like an overall smoothing grain to hide edges and hide imperfections and things like that in skin or otherwise in your photos. Uh, but this is installment number two of Raw to Glorious JPEG here in Adobe Lightroom. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, for all the different features, camera calibration to curves and color channels and sharpening and dehaze and the radial mask for crying out loud, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.